Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over uh, one of the best features of the V18 uh, version of the Sophos XG software. Uh, that is the new NAT section and how they changed the firewall section so that they are independent now. Um, I really, really like what they did here and I'm excited to show you. So let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, to begin with, um, we're just gonna orient a little bit with uh, the environment and what it looks like um, where we're gonna be working. So um, this is the uh, outside of the firewall and this is the inside of the firewall. Uh, the outside, it's a lab environment, so it is still a private subnet. Uh, um, we're gonna be working on this station here, which is on 192.168.50.250. Uh, and the outside of the firewall is this 212 address. On the inside of the firewall, we are going to have this uh, 172.16.16.16 address still, which is the default uh, IP address for a Sophos XG firewall. And uh, we have on the LAN side a Linux server, which is at uh, .52, which we're going to be natting from out here to in here. Okay, let's jump into the interface. Okay, to begin with, um, we're logged into the outside of the firewall because our workstation in this example is uh, outside. And um, down here, the first thing we're gonna do uh, to create our firewall and that rules is um, create uh, host objects. So the XG firewall is uh, object-based. And it's the firewall rules are going to use objects to represent IP addresses instead of just directly typing IP addresses in. You can create the objects when you create the rule, but I think it's just a good habit to get into to manage your objects here and then um, have them ready when you go to create your uh, firewall rules and that rules. In order to do that, you can just come into uh, hosts and services and click that. Uh, we're going to call this first one external Linux server. And we're going to have it be uh, IPv4, a single IP address of 192.168.50.225. We're going to save it. We're going to create one for the internal side. Now I happen to use the word internal and external, so it's really easy for me to uh, identify uh, down the road when I'm trying to pick, pick my object, um, just a habit that I've learned over the years. This happens to be the, the IP address of our Linux server on the inside of the firewall. So you can see down here that we've created these two objects, one for internal and one for external, representing the IP addresses for um, that system. Then we're gonna come up here to rules and policies. Um, you'll see we have a couple tabs here. One's for the NAT rules and one is for the firewall rules. There is a, uh, a few different ways to handle this. Um, they've, they've made it pretty easy. There's a, a, a wizard in here that they call the server access assistant DNAT, which allows you to create a destination NAT rule and a firewall rule and a reflexive rule and a loopback rule. We'll cover, we'll cover all those um, all at once through a pretty simple wizard. Um, the first time through, we're gonna go ahead and we're just going to um, create it manually. Um, so in this example, we're going to give this Linux server its own external IP address, um, 225, uh, that goes directly to its internal address. So in order to, uh, create the uh, firewall rule for that first. We're gonna go ahead and say we wanna create a new firewall rule and we'll call it uh, Linux server uh, SSH. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and log all traffic. Um, this rule is gonna accept traffic that is going for uh, this Linux server on this port. And we can keep uh, the rule on top. I'm not going to group it. So um, down here, we're going to just kind of lay out a firewall rule, essentially. And we're going to say, if traffic is coming from the source area that we're in here, um, 
It will say uh, the zone, sorry, WAN. If traffic's coming from the WAN zone. And um, it's from any network during any time. Uh, you could create your own rules here and limit this more if you'd like. Uh, and it's going to uh, the LAN. Uh, this is the only part in the firewall rules that I find a little bit uh, misleading. Um, we can delete any, and we, we actually pick the destination network as the external. And this is why I label everything external, so it's very easy for me to pull them all up. Uh, it's, it's the external address that we use at this point uh, because the destination that the firewall is looking at is this external um, address. So I'm going to apply that. Uh, specific service, we're going to deselect any, and I'm going to search for SSH. Uh, we're just going to let SSH through in this example. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it in terms of the firewall rule. We're saying if traffic is hitting the WAN and it is coming from anywhere, anytime, and it's heading to the LAN using this inter this external IP address. Uh, go ahead and and it's SSH. Go ahead and accept that traffic. Okay, so I'm going to. Okay, so uh, now now we need a a NAT rule to turn traffic that's destined for that two two five address into uh, the internal address of. Uh, 172, 16, 16, 50. So we're going to go to the NAT tab and we're going to add a NAT rule. Um, now there's a, a few different types of NAT rule. Um, th you'll hear them refer to DNAT or destination NAT and SNAT or source NAT. Uh, DNAT, destination NAT, you can kind of think of as a inbound rule. Um, usually uh, we, we want to set uh, ourselves as the destination and the SNAT or the source NAT we want to set ourselves as the source or we are the source of the traffic is a good way to remember kind of how it works so if I were to call this uh, Linux server DNAT because we are the destination I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up a rule um, so if it's coming from anywhere and it is destined for uh, the external address. Uh, and the port is going to be SSH again. You could leave this as any. It wouldn't matter much. Um, it really depends on, you know, how complicated you want your NAT to be. If you're just doing one-to-one -one and you want one server, uh, to one public address, then you can leave this as any and just map anything heading for that external address to the, the like internal address and then control security with your firewall rules. I'm going to go ahead and keep it limited though and say it's just going to be SSH that we're natting for. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the uh, translated source um, as the original uh, source address. And the translated destination, well, we're going to translate that to the internal address. Uh, we're going to leave the ports alone. You could manipulate the ports and say, if it's coming in as SSH, I want to turn it into you know, HTTP or something along those lines. So this, this rule here is saying, any traffic coming from anywhere looking for this external address on SSH um, Go ahead and let the source look like it came from where it originally came like, but turn the destination into the internal address, uh, 172.16.16.52, and leave the port SSH as SSH. Uh, you could filter by um, what interfaces it does this with. We're not going to. Sometimes if you're running a DMZ, this is something you might want to do, but we're, we're not going to get into that today. Um, now down here, you have a couple options. Uh, you have the loopback option and a reflexive option. So uh, we'll start with the reflexive option. Basically, if we check this box at this point, and, and you can only check this box when you're initially creating the rules. It, you can't go back into the rule later. It will be gone. So if you think you want to create a reflexive rule, this is a good time to do it. What this says is when any traffic comes from the internal Linux server address, 
go ahead and reverse this rule so that that traffic when it leaves the firewall looks like the external address. Um, this can be really handy and you know usually I will enable that if I'm doing one-to-one -one NATs so that I don't have to um, have everything looking like the outside interface of my of my firewall. Okay so the reflexive rule allows the uh, traffic leaving the device to look like the rule that you have mapped inward. Uh, so it's a reverse of this rule and it will create a separate rule in that that you can go manipulate later if you'd like. Uh, the loopback rule, uh, this generally says any internal traffic that's you know looking for that um, external address, go ahead and route it back to the internal address. And the reason you might do this is say you have like a, a public DNS object in here where it's say a web server and you know an internal person does a DNS lookup for you know www.linuxserver.com, gets that public address and then goes, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna go to the internet to have that conversation, not knowing that it's sitting on the same network as the internal Linux server. So the loopback address, what that'll do is when uh, traffic from an inside object is hits the firewall looking for that same outside IP address, it'll go ahead and loop that back into this eternal address so that people can continue to resolve that. Um, you know, by default, uh, it, the, you know, I'll usually check both of these boxes unless I have a reason not to. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And you're going to see that we now have three separate NAT addresses. Uh, we've got a loopback one, a reflexive one, and the one that we created for the destination NAT or DNAT. Okay, uh, now let's test this out. Um, I'm on a workstation that is outside the firewall still. Uh, and I'm going to try to SSH to uh, that external address. And sure enough, we are allowed to log in. And you can see here we have a uh, uh, it's a Kali box running on a Raspberry Pi 2, so it's just a tiny little guy. Uh, but you can see that we are able to get from the firewall uh, on that public address that we created a NAT and SSH firewall rule for. Um, now I'm going to show you the easy way to do it, and you can kind of get a feel for what that looks like. So I'm going to close out of here. I am going to delete these NAT rules. And I'm going to delete uh, the firewall rule that we created. Okay, now I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, this time I'm gonna use the automatic rule. And you'll see how that works. So here we can first specify the internal address. Um, you can create the object here if you want, but since we already have that object there, we can just select it, click Next. Now we select the external address. In this case, we're gonna we're gonna uh, nat off the uh, WAN interface. So we're gonna actually select port two, which is our WAN at two twelve on the firewall itself. Uh, what services? So we're gonna go with SSH again. Click next. Uh, from anywhere is fine. Um, any any outside IP address is able to get through. And then you'll see you get a brief summary page here where you can save and finish. Okay, and you can see here that we've uh, got a bunch of things created. Here is the DNAT rule that it created and uh, gives it a unique name and puts a little description in here. Um, I, I usually like to log my traffic, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. 
the source interface of WAN. So it's uh, if it's coming from the WAN and it's coming from anywhere, uh, and it's heading for the LAN for the public address of the firewall, in this case, that 212, and it's on port SSH, then go ahead and accept it. Then on the NAT rules tab, um, you can see it automatically creates the DNAT rule, the loopback rule, and the reflexive rule, and you really don't have to do um, anything. Uh, you can go into these rules after you're done running the wizard and you know create uh, manual changes if you want. Um, just a really handy way to go about you know doing your NAT. You know a lot of times people will avoid wizards because you know they're not sure what they're doing. Uh, but in this case, it's pretty simple. Uh, it does exactly what it tells you it's going to. You can come in and edit them later, and it does build them in separate rules to make it easy. Um, so really a great job that Sophos has done making this easy uh, for people to use. So, you know, that's an example of how you create um, both manually and with the wizard a NAT rule um, and a firewall rule to allow traffic um, through the firewall to use the NAT uh, if you want to host an internal service on your firewall. Um, there's also a great uh, video by Sophos here that you can link to. Uh, this is about, I think it's about 30 minutes. Uh, they do a good job of really digging deep on the three different types. Uh, if you want some additional information, you know, feel free to click on that link. This is just a quick example. Um, if you have any questions or you want to know anything else about uh, NAT or the firewall rules, feel free to leave a comment. I uh, really appreciate you guys viewing and uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.